16, 13, Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. On this Memorial Day Sunday, we pay our respects to those men and women who gave their lives in combat during World War II for the cause of freedom and liberty. And I know of three from our congregation who did die in combat. One of those was James Williams, who was killed in the invasion of Normandy in 1944. And the other two were Glenn Lowry and Jack Lowry, who were lost at sea on Christmas Eve, 1944. And there were others from our congregation who served during the war also, returned home, and they have since passed away. And that is Elmer Lewis, who was an army chaplain in World War II, and Charles O'Brien. Being a member of the American Legion Auxiliary, I participated in a memorial service for Dorothy Lowry Wyatt just a few weeks ago. She was the last Gold Star Mother in our auxiliary, and she was also a member of our First Christian Church. And I'm truly sorry that Dorothy can't be here in person today so we could honor her. But she's in a much better place, and she's having a reunion with her sons and her husband, and they're a family once again. We have a special place in our hearts for Dorothy, for her example of her faith, even in the tragic loss of her two sons, her only children. Dorothy's love for God and her church will live on for us by the life she lived. But today we want to honor those members of our congregation who have served and are still serving our country by their military service. Jesus referred to himself as the Good Shepherd from John 10, 14. And I'd like to think that these next 17 people that I'm going to introduce to you were Good Shepherds by answering the call to the military duty. We are honoring them today to show our appreciation for setting aside a part of their lives to help maintain peace in our great country. And as I call their names, I'm going to ask each one of them to come forward. And if you will please just hold your applause, and when we're all done, we'll give them a round of applause to show our appreciation. And the first one I want to call is Chuck Dutchka. Chuck was in the Army Reserves from 1956 to 1961. He was in the Pennsylvania 79th Infantry, Company A, the 3rd Battalion, and he was a Specialist 4 when he was discharged. And our next uh, veteran is Charles Moreland. Charles was in the Army from 1953 to 1955, all stationed here in the States. And then from 1956 to 1957, he was in the Navy, and he did go to Guantan Guantanamo, Cuba. Is that correct? And I can sympathize with Chuck because he had to leave the Navy because he was seasick. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be me also. <laughs> Kurt Farshall. Kurt is uh, our active veteran. He is in the Pennsylvania Air National Guard. He's been in the Guard from April 1982, so he already has 14 years service. He is an E-6, a technical sergeant, and his job is an aerospace ground equipment mechanic. And he told me he has seven to eight ribbons already. James Ashton. Jim was in the Air Force from April 1942 until December 1945. He was stationed in the state of California in the Mojave Desert where he trained pilots. And his medals are the Sharpshooter and the American War Veterans Medals. And Aldo Stachy. I'm not going to forget you today, Aldo. <laughs> Aldo was in the service from 1944 until 1946. He was in the field artillery attached to the 2nd Army. He served in France, Germany, and Belgium. And Karen Duval. Karen is the only female member of our veterans today. And she's also the daughter of a veteran. Karen was in the U.S. Army Reserves from 1976 to 1979. She was stationed at Fort McClellan, Alabama in the 131st Supply Company. 
Glenn Guzman. You can start a line over here. Uh, Glenn was in the Army from 1953 to 1955. He did his basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky. He was assigned to the 547th Artillery in the 2nd Armored Cavalry in Germany, and he has many campaign ribbons. And uh, Robert Guzman, I didn't know Bob was going to be here today, but this is really special because you're going to see we have four brothers to present to you today. Bob was in the Army from 1953 to 1955. He was a corporal stationed at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and his job was instructor for machine guns. And Alden Guzman. <coughs> Alden was in the Army from March 17, 1954 to March 17, 1957. He was a staff sergeant in the Signal Corps where he was a teletype operator. He was stationed in Korea for 16 months and he was the recipient of the Good Conduct Medal and the Sharpshooter Medal. And the last of the Guzmans is George. And George was in the Army from July 3, 1969 to July the 4th, 1971. He was stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, and he took care of the Army Aviator flight records. And he got orders twice to go to Vietnam, but because they didn't have anyone to replace him to do that job, his orders were canceled. So he did spend his time in the I think he was happy about that. <laughs> And George also received the Good Conduct Medal and the Vietnam Service Medal. <coughs> and next we have Jim Kane. Jim was in the Air Force from 1949 to 1953, and then he came out for two years, and he went back into the Air Force, and he served until 1971, retiring with 20 years service. And he served in the Arctic twice, Japan, Korea, Germany, the Philippines, and Vietnam. And this is a listing of the medals that he received during his service. The Air Crew Member Badge, the Bronze Star, the Good Conduct Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, Korean Service Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal, the United Nations Service Medal, Presidential Unit Citation, the Air Force Longevity Ribbon, the Air Force Outstanding Unit Award, the Vietnam Campaign Ribbon, the Small Arms Expert Ribbon, and he's also a graduate of the MCO Academy. Quite a record, Jim. <laughs> Charles Elan. Charles was in the Navy from January 1942 until December of 1945. He served in the Philippines, and his medals are the Good Conduct Medals and others, he told me. And Don Williams? Don was in the Army. During 1958-1959, he was stationed at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. His medals are the Good Conduct and the Rifle Medal. And Don was just in the service for a short while. He was discharged because his father had suffered a stroke, and Don was permitted to come home and take care of his family. Richard Heffron. Dick was in the Navy from 1951 until December of 1959. That includes reserve time. He was in the 6th Fleet. He told me there were only four ships that the United States had, and he was on one of them in the Mediterranean. And he was in all the different countries of the Mediterranean, like France, Turkey, Greece, Cuba, Italy, North Africa. So he saw a lot of places. 
He received two World War II occupation medals for being in occupied Europe. And next we have Jim Cushenberry. Jim was a sergeant, Company L, 31st Regiment, 7th Division Infantry. He was in the Korean War from January 1951 to 1953. The medals he received were the Korean Service Medal, the Purple Heart, the Good Conduct Medal, four battle stars, and the Combat Infantry Badge and Medal. And Gerald Rodeback. Gerald was in the Army from February 1943 to November of 1945. He was in 3rd Army Ordnance, and he was stationed in England, France, Germany, and Luxembourg. And the last uh, veteran I have to present is Addison Bowers. Army from February of 1943 until October of 1945. He was uh, in the infantry. He was assigned to the 36th Texas Division, Company A, the 141st Infantry Regiment, the 7th Army. And he was served, I mean, he served in Italy, France, Austria, and Germany. He was in the invasion of Salerno, and he was in the invasion of southern France at Green Beach. And the medals that Addison received, I should say that at, when Addison went overseas, he was gone for 33 months before he came home. And uh, the one time that he was wounded, he was in the hospital for 74 days. And uh, when I was over at his house the other night, he has two newspapers from 1944 and 1945, and that's how I learned a lot of his information. But uh, he received the Bronze Service Arrowhead, the EAME ribbon, the Combat Infantry Badge, five Bronze Service Stars, the Good Conduct Medal, the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service in Direct Support of Combat Operations, the Oak Leaf Cluster to the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart, and he also received the Italian Cross for Military Valor from the Italian Ministry of War. I believe that the United States has the finest military force in the world. And it's because of men and women like this. And I just want to borrow a phrase from the recruiting office that these are America's finest. And now you may give them a round of applause.